The Confessions of Saint Augustine Book 2, Chapter 1 I will now call to mind my past fullness and the carnal corruptions of my soul, not because I love them, but that I may love you, O my God, for love of your love I do it renewing my most wicked ways in the very bitterness of my remembrance, for you may grow sweet unto me, you sweetest never failing, you blissful and assured sweetness, and gathering me again out of that my dissipation, wherein I was torn piecemeal, while turned from you the one good, I lost myself among a multiplicity of things. For I even burnt in my youth heretofore to be satiated in things below, and I dared to grow wild again with these various and shadowy loaves. My beauty consumed away, and I stank in your eyes, pleasing myself and desires to please in the eyes of men. Chapter 2 And what was it that I delighted in but to love and be loved? But I kept not the, the measure of love of mind to mind, friendship's bright boundary, but out of the muddy concupiscence of the flesh and the babblings of youth, mist fumed up which clouded and overcast my heart, that I could not discern the clear brightness of love from the fog of lustfulness. Both did confusedly boil in me and hurried me unstayed, youth over the precipice of unholy desires, and sank me in a gulf of flagitiousness. Your wrath had gathered over me, and I knew it not. I was grown deaf by the clanking of the chain of my mortality, the punishment of the pride of my soul, and I strayed further from you, and you let me alone, and I was tossed about and wasted and dissipated, and I boiled over in my fornications, and you held your peace. O oh, you, my tardy joy! You then held your peace and I wandered further and further from you into more and more fruitless seed plots of sorrows with a proud dejectedness and a restless weariness. Oh, that someone had then attempted my disorder and turned to account the fleeting beauties of these, the extreme points of your creation had put a bound to their pleasure-ableness. And so, the tides of my youth might have cast themselves upon the marriage shore, if they could not be calmed and kept within the object of a family, as your law prescribes, O Lord, who this way form the, the offspring of this our death, being able with a gentle hand to blunt the thorns which were excluded from your paradise? For your omnipotency is not far from us, even when we be far from you. Else ought I more watchfully to have hidden the voice from the clouds? Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you, and it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And he that is unmarried thinks of the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married cares for the things of this world, how he may please his wife. To these words I should have listened more attentively, and being severed from, for the kingdom of heaven's sake, had more happily awaited your embraces, but I, poor wretch, formed like a troubled. See, 
following the washing of my own tide, forsaking you and exceeded all your limits. Yet I escaped not your scourges. For what mortal can? For you were ever with me mercifully rigorous, and besprinkling with most bitter alloy all my unlawful pleasures, that I might seek pleasures without a lie. But where to find such I could not discover, save in you, O Lord, who teaches by sorrow and wound us to heal and kills us, lest we die from you. Where was I, and how far was I exiled from the delights of your house in that sixteenth year of the age of my flesh, when the madness of lust to which human shamelessness gives free license, thou unlicensed by your laws, took the wool over me, and I resigned myself wholly to it? My friends, meanwhile, took no care by marriage to save my fall. Their only care was that I should learn to speak excellently and be a persuasive orator.